Welcome back to the chat cave here on McGTV, youtube.com slash Mike McGTV. As always, we're your hosts, Mike and my Blaximus. Blaximus, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome back, man. Uh, we, we made it one episode without having to memorialize someone, but unfortunately, another huge staple in not just Batman mythology, but also in our childhood. Uh, passed away recently. We are, of course, here to commemorate the uh, creative contributions and recognize the talent of Arlene Sorkin, who was not only the first voice for Harley Quinn, but also kind of the basis for the character. So um, I believe she was around the same age as Kevin Conroy when she passed both in their mid sixties, I believe. Yeah, she was 67, 67. And she passed away this past uh, weekend. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just another, you know, I'll start off here. It's just uh, another tremendous loss. I feel in terms of, you know, these people who played significant roles in our childhood in something that we enjoyed growing up enjoying watching and learning more about and again i can't understate like how important her work was to you know introducing a new concept to batman lore a new character who's you know at this point got generations of fans (laughs) yeah um you know it's it's a the story of harley quinn is amazing um, she was the she wasn't even a named character when when you know Paul Dini thought her up. He's like, okay, well, you know, like this will just be a nice tribute to my friend. Mm-hmm. We'll move on, and you know, so you know, he he made up a little henchman, female henchman B, and <laughs> and he's like, hey, like I you know I, I was thinking of you when I made this character. You want to just you know voice it? You get you get one episode, and you know, like there's two lines. And she did so, you know, like everyone was so captivated by the character and the voice that you know she got written into more episodes and, and the whole backstory was created. Like they had like they didn't realize what they had when they made it. They had to form everything around it. Mm-hmm. And, it, and this is also in a time, you know, where this wasn't, you know, like now, not everyone was as inclusive in their thinking, not everyone was as inclusive in their writing, and she is this this strong female character who who created herself, you know, like mm-hmm. it's <laughs> it, it's really amazing, like even you know, like for even more amazing for the time that she crushed she kicked down the door she didn't mm-hmm. she took a giant hammer to the door and, <laughs> and and said i i'm harley quinn and i am here and and you know like i i was you know doing some research for this episode and i'm i'm shocked that it's only 15 episodes of batman the animated series that yeah. feature holly harley quinn yeah and because uh, i remember her so vividly as just being a major part of the show and and you know like uh, of of you know sixty episode run like like I mean, fifteen episodes is a good chunk I guess for a villain who's not you know not the main villain not the main character but uh, yeah it, it's it's amazing what she did and she just established herself she became canon you know and and, and all from just our lead like it, it it's a character like yeah you said based on her the physically and 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 personality uh, the, wise yeah, yeah personality and and then she voiced it and and the whole thing was just magic well the thing is is that arlene you know she she might not have recognized her outside of maybe her voice work but this this woman was a worker like she did 400 plus 427 episodes of days of our lives 
throughout her, you know, her throughout her lifetime, she played Calliope Jones, I guess. And that's where the Harley Quinn basis comes from is she and Paul Dini were college friends and he based the imagery and some of the personality of Harley Quinn around this part where she played like a clown in a dream sequence. And he was so captivated by her performance in that, that he's like, I'm going to make a character, even if, like you said, even if it's just going to be a one-off kind of character for Arlene. And so it's a testament to their friendship a little bit that he kind of got her idiosyncrasies very well in the dialogue and in the characterization. And it's a testament to her characterization and her performance that, yeah, she's only in a handful of episodes technically in the original Batman series, but they are memorable. You, you, you feel like she's been there the whole time, even though, you know, it's only 15 or so episodes and that's yeah, and not including like, say, her one-offs and say Justice League or, you know, the Superman show. Cause she did show up here and there outside of right. Batman, but. And then like, you know, in, in, in the return of the Joker, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're watching the, uh, the, the more adult one, not the, not the one that I showed up on TV, you know, like her performance is always there. Mm -hmm. It is, it, you 100% believe Harley Quinn. Like it, it I, 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 you can't describe lightning in a bottle, you know, like that's what it was. Like you just, nobody else, I was, that, that was the only character created by the animated series, wasn't it? Like there was never, there, there were others, I think. Um, I mean, there were some other one-off villains and some other, I think like Renee Montoya was mm, originally started yeah. in the animated series before she moved over to comics. So there's, there's like some supporting characters. But certainly, like, the one who, like you said, was the lightning in the bottle. All those characters are great and all, but the one who really resonated with people, as we can tell from, you know, the marketplace of DC stuff, it was Harley Quinn. Like, and that 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 really amazed me is that, you know, there was going to be a Batman cartoon regardless. And as, you know, as much as Kevin Conroy's... Uh, performance really really anchored that show and kept the legitimacy of that show alive and really the longevity of it um like it was still gonna be a batman show that maybe would have been you know done in a very different way or maybe not would have lasted that long had he not been involved here arlene and paul had the chance to create something from whole cloth and that's kind of incredible because it's a balancing act because I, I was thinking about this too uh, before we did our conversation is it had a difficult thing to do, which is we want to have the menacing type of Joker, the one that unsettles you, that creeps you out, but can still kind of make you feel a little bit like <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed at that, but I'm laughing. And also we have to kind of humanize him by partnering him up with this gun mall, even if it's just for this first episode or so. You, you have to somehow make him human to a degree that someone would want to hang around him and be infatuated with him. And they make it work. Like Mark Hamill's performance, especially with, you know, when he's working off of her, there's a dimension of the Joker that's never really been there before in comics or in other movies or shows that you're ready to explore a little bit, which is like, this is, could this possibly be the person that, <laughs> humanizes him a little bit but that's the tragedy of it is she keeps trying to do that but he isn't capable of it but yeah he's the joker yeah. <laughs> but like also like that it, it makes the joker more villainous if that's a mm -hmm. possible thing and <laughs> you know, it, it adds layers to the joker and then harley has like she has her own story and mm -hmm. and even her her whole you know, like um, the storyline from from you know the beginning till now is is a great you know like it, it, she's a great character. It's it's and, a really empowering kind of story in a way. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. And and you know because like the Joker is just horrible to her as he is to everyone. Mm -hmm. Um. But uh, you know, like that she was in love with him and 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 she you know was brainwashed by him and all these things like it. And then her escaping from that, you know, again, is just, is so, it's so cool. It's been done so well. And, and again, like it all started with this just kind of like throwaway 
not really anything thing. Like, it, just like the, the story of Harley, Harley Quinn, like her story is awesome. But the story of how Harley Quinn is also awesome. <laughs> yeah, this thing that no one realized what they had until like they hear it in the sound booth or they see it animated with the voice. And yeah, this whole idea of how it just exemplifies how much more villainous the character of the Joker is, is because like, that's also a testament to Arlene's performance because as much as she can do the, the screwball type of like, you know, Queens <laughs> accent and it's brassy <laughs> and, yeah. and it's giddy at times. But then when she has to do devastatingly sad, like when she is utterly betrayed by the Joker and you know, there are those moments where she really is torn about her allegiances that I think those were the first couple of episodes when I was growing up watching that show and it really clicked for me what a really abusive relationship looks like. Mm -hmm. Like that was the first time like my nine, 10 year old brain was just like, wow, this is gaslighting. Before I even knew what gaslighting meant, this is physical, mental, emotional abuse on a grand scale. And it's being made for kids to really make it palatable for us to understand that. And she brought a legitimacy to that kind of story because because i mean like yeah yeah, if you're nine or ten years old and you can be like why does she stay like Mm -hmm. what is it you know that that keeps her there and then you know like you're watching you know her try so hard for this dude and you know like again like he'll he'll drop her on you know like he'll cut and run he you know he treats her like crap he'll you know throw her out he'll straight up hit her he'll hit her yeah and and you're just like, how is it that she stayed? Like, yeah, for a, for a child to start grasping these concepts, I think that's doing something, you know? And mm-hmm. I mean, like, it's it's obviously not a nice thing, but, you know, like, that it's, you are still able to emotionally connect, understand yeah. and connect with, to what she's going through is is a, a, in a cartoon, you know? And, and, and yeah, that is that is 100% all. I mean, like, you know, Kevin Conroy, obviously, Mark Hamill, great performers you know and great performances but she shines in her own way and i mean like that she had all this wonderful company to keep is you know mm-hmm. only just makes everything better but uh yeah it's it's a, a tragically beautiful story and and they pull it off and they pull it off so that kids can understand that it's beautiful yeah. and, and, and and horrible and and awesome and all these things like all at the same time it's it's real um and it's not talking down to your audience, even though you know your audience is going to skew younger, which has always been the strength of the show. And like you said, the strength and testament to these uh, actors in specifically because they didn't go for, okay, this person's done superhero shows for years now. Let's get this voice or let's get this, you know, more cartoony kind of voiceover artist because it's a more cartoony type of character or more over the top character. Like they pull from like, just down to earth actors who they just know will elevate the material by adding some kind of tangible legitimacy to um to the character. And so, yeah, she was she was definitely a find. I mean, that I know that was the way it kind of worked is Paul Dini was like, "I'll get you on this show." But yeah. like <laughs> it, it she definitely earned her keep in staying there because I was thinking about like I don't think there's a Harley episode or a Joker Harley centric episode in the series that I don't like. Like even, even in that first one where she's there for, I think Joker's favor, that's her first appearance technically. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's just a hench woman technically, but even then like there's so much zest and life in, in her character at that point, even like, it feels like she's known about all these people for years. Like she's given bullet crap. She's, you know, <laughs> trying to play her wiles on Batman. And he's like, uh-huh, tell me another one. Like, yeah. that's another great dynamic, too. Her and Kevin Conroy working together is without doubt some of the, my favorite moments. Because she is like that annoying kid's sister. And Batman has seems to have infinite patience for this one <laughs> for this one character. Well, I, I also feel like she's she's Joker's Robin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, so, you know, like... When you, when you like Batman's like oh here we go like <laughs> like I gotta deal with Harley Quinn again you know and 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 she holds her own in, like with Batman you know and it's like she was never a weak character or you know like someone that needed to be saved she was always part of the plot she was always you know like in the action 
And and yeah, like just what a great I don't you know, like Joker never had a sidekick before. Right. This. And 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 who could stand next to the Joker? Like that you ask that question and, and it's this it's Harley Quinn. And who gives as good as he gives in terms of the then because she'll push back at times and it's not like hired goon you know the hired goons are mostly like subservient to their main villains oh, in the yeah. show but like she absolutely like like you said she strikes out on her own so like she teams up with poison ivy that's one of my favorite episodes is their first team up um and like she'll when she finds out like when he slights her sometimes she will absolutely like demolish him <laughs> and oh, it yeah. is it's hilarious yeah. to see that come up and <laughs> And and even the Joker knows to be afraid of Harley Quinn sometimes. Yeah, like, exactly. It, 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 it's amazing, and and you know, it's just what a what a great ride. And you know, and uh, I think um, Arlene Sorkin started stopped voicing um, Harley Quinn maybe after the uh, DC the DC universe is when yeah, she retired. She, she did the first Arkham game, uh, Arkham Asylum, and then she did DC Universe Online, and that is her last. Uh, official role i believe mm-hmm. at least not and, and uh, yeah i think tara strong has been voicing her since then and they've gotten some other actors and but i mean Certainly. like it's yeah, and tara strong top Phenomenal. notch yeah was i mean like i i mean i got i got her signature right over here like <laughs> i <laughs> um yeah i mean okay right it was uh, uh like yeah, <laughs> you're, tara, you're tara showing your <laughs> A great actress, but I mean, like, even still, like, she's doing her best Arlene Sorkin. Yeah, that's something else I want to bring up, too, is that it's it's one thing, because, you know, there have been other Batman performances, there have been other Joker performances, to varying degrees of success or failures, you know, we always say, like, no one can hold a torch to Kevin Conroy, or um don't but try. don't even try, do, but do people, do but pe- <laughs> yeah, but people do, people do other versions i've been thinking about like a lot of the harley iterations we've had since arlene they all take their lead from that initial performance like to some degree or another like even the most recent one with uh the max show uh <laughs> the uh the harley quinn max show. Hey, yeah she, she starts off very arlene sorkin ish and then it's kind of a gradual meta thing where the more she breaks away from her old ways and the Joker, the more she's able to embrace a different type of voice, but there's still a root of it. That's there. Um, like you said, Tara strong is absolutely like putting her own kind of staple on it, but still calling back to Arlene's performance. Margot Robbie has a lot of early <laughs> Arlene performance in her live action role. And it's, yeah, yeah, uh, and, and I mean, like uh, Lady Gaga is going to play uh, Harley Quinn in mm-hmm. the uh, the next Joker movie. If that, you know, if, if everything, when whenever <laughs> this all blows over, whatever. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's she's going to be doing her her Arlene Sorkin. Like, like mm-hmm. that that is what's going to happen, and, and I'm excited to see it. You know, but like I, we wouldn't we would not have any of this without without this lovely lady. And yeah. Uh, um, you know, I just want to say she uh, she was battling uh, multiple sclerosis yeah. and 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 finally succumbed to that. But uh, you know, just you know, what a and and she's married to one of the one of one of great TV producer. You know, like yeah, Frazier. This lady, yeah, <laughs> this lady has has kind of been everywhere and and been a part of a lot like a lot of the TV that you you know you have seen. She's had a hand kid in. from the nineties. Yeah, and and it's. She will be missed, and and you know, like again, she like she hasn't been doing the voice for a while now, but uh, but you know, you you like when you heard her, you knew it was her, and, and yeah, it, yeah, it was just uh, you know, it's it's sad. It makes me sad that she's gone now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I was thinking of, I mean, like I said, I enjoy all the episodes that the characters in and Arlene's portrayal, but what 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 are like two of your favorites? Do you have two uh yeah so um the, again the uh the episode where her and, and uh, poison ivy kind of hit the town and and, and, mm-hmm. and start this girls club uh and the joker is so jealous <laughs> that they're that like they're doing it you know and, and without him like it, it, that that's a great episode but like my probably my favorite episode of all time is almost got him mm-hmm. and uh <laughs> where uh you know like um 
Catwoman saves Batman, but they capture Catwoman. So Batman's got to figure out where they've got her because they're going to kill her after a certain point in time. And uh, he dresses up as Killer Croc, and they're all telling their their best almost got times. Batman's. They almost got Batman, yeah. and and so like it's a great episode with, with all the villains just playing poker and and, and chatting it up. But uh, yeah, Harley's just uh, I and I. I wait, so they've got uh, I think she gets like electrocuted in that one. <laughs> but, no. Uh, but, um... They they well they almost Joker almost gets Batman if I recall Catwoman saves him but then she gets mm-hmm. knocked out by Harley so Harley's like chatting it up with Catwoman at a cat food factory like they're gonna <laughs> dice her yes <laughs> and yo uh, Batman arrives because he figures out where they are that's why he went undercover in the first place right um, and then Harley's like you. What are you going to do? You're going to kick me around? You're going to save your kit and get it? You know, because we can't say because we can't say the other word because it's a kid's right. show. Um, so For Batman, sure. like Batman, because he's Batman, he he's, happens to be right next to the main power like lever. So he just switches it off. And she's like, ah, good call. Help. And like, again, Arlene, he has that like ability to be funny and also you're terrified because if you immediately hear her get hit after that yeah it's like yep. and, it's, and and that's also it too you know it's like batman like you have to knock harley quinn out like mm-hmm. otherwise she's coming at you with a giant mallet like it, yep. it's it, you know like so you're like yeah no i think it's, it's an off-screen hit you know because like yeah you know, yeah you can't show, you can't show women, but like right yeah like do you take her seriously like you gotta knock her out right. <laughs> like that's not something you leave to chance <laughs> like yeah so i that uh almost got him it was probably it was my pinnacle harley I, i'm right there with you with harley and i i mean like i said i enjoy all of them but harley and ivy i definitely love the thelma and louise aspect of it they, they yeah. just, her and i believe it's diane pershing they have so much fun together you can tell because they all would record you know together mm. in in the room and stuff so you can tell the chemistry is there between those two it's a shame we didn't get more episodes featuring those two now that we hindsight now that we know like where that duo can kind of go you know mm. it can go into like romantic territory and it still works but like harley's holiday stuck out to me quite a bit it's it's a later episode in the series where she's trying to reform like she gets uh, she gets clear from arkham asylum and again, testament to Arlene's performance because she's able to do unhinged, she's able to do vulnerable, and she's able to do so like sweet and endearing. Everyone in the episode, whether they're being held hostage by her or they're just passing her by, they seem to just really, they don't, they may not respect her, but they do have an affection for her on some level, mm-hmm. e- level even Batman. Like the opening, I was rewatching it uh, last night the opening where she's like getting her clearance from her doctor and she hears Jonathan Crane being brought in by Batman. And he's like, you can't do this to me. I'm the God of fear or something like that. And she's like, hi, Dr. Crane. And he's like, Oh, hello child. (laughs) Anyway, like he immediately like just goes back to rant. And I just, I remember laughing because she's like, she has this just sweet, like, Oh, Hey, Dr. Crane. Like she, everyone's her friend at Arkham. And um, there's that she holds Veronica Vreeland hostage. And then she ends up like palling around with her. Like she ends up becoming like her friend while she's holding her hostage. Like they're just taking it. Yeah. And it's just like the, uh, the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. what else could go wrong? And and even like Batman, she wanted to just pay for a dress. Like, and she just needed to take the security tag off, but she thought she was getting pinched. And, like, and yeah and that's that's that but you know like yeah even batman in that episode where you know it's like he's like man harley like i see you tried you know mm-hmm. like it sucks that it got here but like he gets her the uh, dress <laughs> he he yeah. brings the dress to her at the very end he's like i had a bad day too once so i get it and that's yeah. when she does a whole nice guys like you shouldn't have bad days and she like kisses him full on the mouth and she's like call me when i get out of here he's like yeah okay okay yeah we'll see about we'll that see. <laughs> meanwhile poison ivy's watching there being like uh-huh oh we'll see about that <laughs> right um no it's uh it's it's just you know it's a shame about arlene yeah. and but at least we have the legacy of of harley quinn to always remember her by because yeah. you can't you can't do the character without some piece of Arlene Sorkin coming through there. So yeah. we will always have that. From here, like even in comics, because the way she talks, and I know people have done variations where 
the queen's accent it comes and goes but there is a root of it there even in the comics what mm-hmm. i love what they sometimes do in the comics is that when she is going full let's say psychotic harley she'll lean into the mr j and you know <laughs> have her like sharper accent but then when she has these more lucid or more soulful moments she'll drop all that and that is consistent with the character that's established in the show because they did the adaptation of mad love in the later reds uh the later season of the batman mm-hmm. show and she arlene as much as i mentioned my favorite episodes there this is probably her best performance as a character because she's able to play with harleen before she becomes harley and so right. you hear like you're just trying to be this person who wants to excel in her field who thinks that if she takes on this challenge of trying to you know bring therapy to this madman that she'll somehow make it out on top and then you hear that kind of disintegrate in her relationship with the joker and it gives way to the puddings and all that stuff the mm. mannerisms that we know harley for and she does a great and it's heartbreaking too because at the very end when she thinks she's finally clear of the joker she's like no more clowns and it's just her regular voice it's not the affectation of the queen's accent and her, it's just like no more clowns i'm done with this and she goes to her cell and there's a flower there from the joker and she's like good or angel or something and it's just like oh man she was so close like it breaks your heart and arlene consistently would make us laugh but also make it break our hearts a little bit yeah oh uh, yeah and, and i'm like when it, it, she's great in that you know she is her own whole you know you're you're so interested in her story but then like too like watching the joker you know i go to therapy every day and slowly twist this twist her mind and 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 do all this is a whole like you you never knew the joker could play a long game like that yeah and and that's like crazy and amazing and like just great storytelling and all these things and yeah what an awesome character. I'm I'm so glad we had the chance to get to know Arlene Sorkin through this. And yeah. and it's uh, you know, it's a shame, but but again, we will always have this. So, if you are somehow a novice to Batman the Animated Series, which I can imagine you are if you're watching this podcast, <laughs> Yeah, the no, first are... time, yeah, check out Batman the Animated Series. It's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> check out any Harley Quinn episode. I recommend all of them, but we named some of our favorites. And, yeah, check out Arlene's great contribution. Her creation, is, she's a co-creator as far as I'm concerned. Paul Dini right. might have written down, Bruce Tim may have designed. She literally and figuratively gives the voice. That well, and, and I mean, everyone like, follows. She she was the model. She was the you know, she was everything for this character. The character was like literally based on her. So like, mm-hmm. there's no Harley Quinn without Arlene Sorkin. Like, they, they, it just there's zero. There, there's no other pulls. It's not like he was like, oh, I was thinking of Cleopatra and and, and this person, and <laughs> right. I put you know I matched it all together to make this. It's like no, no, this it was, was Arlene. This person. And and yeah, so and thank that's you, a te- really. that's a testament to their friendship too. What a sweet friendship! Yes. Well, I know we kind of wrapped up things on the Kevin Conroy tribute episode with a similar kind of uh, gimmick. I thought I'd do this as well. Um, I was just thinking too, and I said this on some social media a while, a while back. It's like hope. Arlene and Kevin are exchanging lines and having fun up in the great beyond now. Uh, him being the straight man to her shenanigans. <laughs> uh, but there's definitely this song that she performed for, I think it was the Harley Quinnade episode that we'll wrap up on a little bit of. But uh, thank you so much for letting us pay tribute to a sweet lady and a great talent, R.I.P. Arlene. Um, Check out more of Blacksimus over at the Three Geeks podcast on YouTube and all major platforms. Check out me here at youtube.com slash Mike McGee TV. And thanks for the memories, Arlene. And uh, we'll see you guys. Same chat time, same chat channel, Mike McGee TV. Welcome to Check It. <laughs> I never knew that our romance had ended. 
until you poisoned my food. And I thought it was a lark when you kicked me in the park. But now I think it was rude. I never knew that you and I were finished until that bottle hit my head. Though I tried to be aloof when you pushed me off the roof. I feel our romance is dead.